Hello, crafty friends. I am Courtney Brickner, the CB behind the Crafty Brick. Welcome to my class today where I am going to be sharing a very fun project with you that I have searched high and low for the perfect materials to get you started and make your own. I know that traveling is so much fun. Traveling with kids is so much fun, but sometimes it can be hard to keep them entertained during all of the traveling time. So what I have done is searched high and low for the perfect thing to keep them entertained. It's um, some travel games that I have designed, but I found the perfect thing for you to have with them. It's a little metal container, and I found these super cute little index cards. They come with six different colors. So I designed six different games that we are going to make today. So they store perfectly in here. It comes with a dry erase pen and a little wipe so that you can reuse these games over and over. And then they store compactly and they're very easy to take with you. I am going to be designing them in Leonardo Design Studio. You can use any cutting machine that you have. We're going to be using adhesive vinyl and I will be showing you how to make them. Stick around to the end because I have some well, throughout the whole video, I have some tips and tricks that help you work with adhesive vinyl because it's not really my absolute favorite material to work with. Sometimes it can be a little frustrating because it gets all stuck together, but I have some tips to show you how to make it a little bit easier and to put it all together. So how about we jump into the computer? I'll show you some of the designing. I'm not going to walk you through the entire design process because it did take me a little while to make all of them. So I'm going to show you some basic things to get started and then you can go from there. So I'm gonna speed through some of that. But I just wanted you to know that we're going to be making it at the end of this video. We will have a finished game and you will be able to make your own. So how about we get started? All right, all right. We are in Leonardo Design Studio here and I've already measured my, um, my little magnet. So I want to do a rounded rectangle down here. So we're down in the shapes. Let's see. I'm gonna do 0.125 curve, perfect. And the width, I would like it to be four. The height, I would like it to be six. All right, so we've got that there. So this is how big of a space we have to work with. So I just wanted to have that there so that I can get the spacing right for all the games. So first we're gonna start with tic-tac-toe. Then we're going to do mango sticky. Actually, let me do capital letters. Actually, all capital letters. Tic-tac-toe. All right, and we will change this color to black and put this right up on the top. Now we'll go down and do another rectangle. We're going to just make our tic-tac-toe board here. So let's see how big we need it to be. This is actually probably pretty good. Let's do a copy and paste here. And we're gonna hi highlight those two and just make sure that they're lined up at the bottom here. Align the bottom. Now I'm going to copy this one. Oh, I did both, so let's, actually I need two so that works out. Let's turn those to the side there. They are a little big. So let's put all these together because I like this, the layout of the board. Let's weld those together. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. I welded it so that I am able to move them all together. All right, so that is our first game right there. Let's move that on up out of the way. 
copy this square here or rectangle here. Now our next game that we're going to make is, let's copy that. I just did control C, control V. Let's change that word to dots. Alrighty, and now for this game, we need a lot of circles. I figured for the sake of this workshop, you don't need to see me make each game individually, but you just get the idea that I'm using the four by six rounded rectangle as a template for each one so that I can get the spacing right. And then I know exactly how big each game board should be. I just use basic lines for most of these. For the hangman, I wasn't quite sure if I should have the whole alphabet at the bottom, but I opted to just have this box and you can write the letters that you've guessed already so you can keep track of them. So this is how I designed each of the games in my Leonardo design software. You can do this in any design software. And now we're ready to go send it to cut. All right, the first thing we're going to do is get Juliet ready to cut our material. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this behind and load it from the back. Since we are using a material that doesn't need, or that has a backing, we don't need a mat. But I need to lift the lever to bring the wheels up. And then I will make sure that the vinyl is touching all of the rollers here in this position. And actually, let me show you this as well. The rollers all need to be on the grip rollers on the bottom. So they, the rollers here need to be touching those grip rollers on the bottom. If you are not using a mat, you need to make sure that those are all touching or else your material will move around and your cut will be messed up. So if it's touching all of the grip rollers on the bottom, the rollers are touching all of the material on every spot, then you are good to go. Now, if you're using like a smaller piece and it was like maybe this big, you wanna make sure that those two rollers are touching. Or if you're using a bigger piece, make sure that those two rollers are touching. You just wanna make sure that you've got even pressure throughout your entire material. So since this is a 12, um, I think it's a 12 inch piece of material, I'm making sure that it's touching all three of those rollers. Now, I, or the rollers are down, they're locked now. We're going to send all of our game boards to cut and then we will apply them to our magnet. Now that we've got all of the game boards cut out here, um, we will go ahead and weed everything and we will be ready to apply it to our magnetic pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed. Okay, I wanna stop here for just a second to show you a couple tips that I find helpful when working with adhesive vinyl. One is when I am weeding something, I don't just ball up my um, vinyl and just discard it right there because a lot of times you might have like a rogue piece of vinyl that has tried to get away and you don't even know it until you're finished weeding. So what I like to do is I'm gonna show you right here all of the pieces that I weeded, I just stick them here to my workspace so that I save them until the end of my project. And then if I am looking through my sheets and I notice that maybe this one would be probably the culprit, is like the little line for the tic-tac-toe. If I see that it's missing, I can go back to my tic-tac-toe piece and I can get it out. But if I had balled it all up, then I have to recut that piece. Now you might have to recut anyway, but the chances of you having to recut are lower if you don't ball up your vinyl. So that's my first recommendation. My second one is I've got this one, the ABC I Spy. These letters are very, very small. So I'm going to show you a method of putting your transfer paper on and weeding when you're dealing with small, intricate details. So all of these were fine to weed normally, but what I wanted to do now is to show you reverse weeding. So let's do that. Okay, I've got all these teeny little letters. One actually messed up, so I am gonna have to recut that. So 
unfortunate, but that happens every now and then. But let me just show you, I'll recut that one letter. We're gonna take our transfer paper and apply it right on top of our vinyl. We are not weeding yet, okay? So with reverse weeding, you keep that vinyl on, then we're going to remove the backing so all of our vinyl is still intact. Then what we're going to do is take our vinyl piece and lift it up. And we're just doing it in the opposite direction. So our words are already stuck onto the transfer paper. The only thing you wanna make sure with reverse weeding is that you don't lay any of your vinyl down on top of another piece, okay? And I can already see that one of the pieces didn't pick up. I think it's the D. The M was already messed up, but the D didn't pick up. But since I didn't ball it up, I have the D right here. Let's take it out. And then I can just place it Oops, the middle of the D is still there. And then I'll just place it right where it belongs. Then you can take your weeding tool and take out the middle parts, just as you would with the other weeding. Now these, these bigger letters I could have weeded just the same way. But <clears throat> those teeny little letters, those were not going to weed properly. They were going to just come apart from the vinyl and they were just gonna be all balled up in a mess and I was going to be irritated. So when I'm dealing with small intricate designs, I always do reverse weeding. And then you're left with this. It's already on the transfer paper. I need to recut that little end, but that is the last one I need to do. So that's my recommendation when you're dealing with small intricate pieces. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you when working with adhesive vinyl. Go slowly. While you're weeding, kinda of wiggle your vinyl to break it apart from the letters. Cause sometimes it gets stuck and then the letter will pull up. So I just go very slowly, take my time, and kind of jiggle back and forth. And if any of them try to come up, oops, like that one, just use your tweezers. Move it out of the way for a moment, and then you can go back to it. Jiggle, jiggle, and then take that off. And then you can take that piece that was trying to get away and go ahead and put it back in place. And that makes vinyl a little bit easier when you make sure you go slowly, steady, slow and steady wins the race, right? And get all of the pieces out, then we'll get the middle pieces out. And that just makes it easier to work with. All right, now we got all of our pieces cut. A piece of transfer paper. Let's do hangman first. Put our transfer paper on. Rub it down so that it attaches. Peel it off. And then we're going to place it onto our game piece. Okay, now I'm going to speed this part up, but I'm just going to apply all the games onto the magnets. While I was working, I remembered one more trick that I can share with you. Using parchment paper allows you to lay down your design get it all lined up 
so that you're not sticking it down and it's not in the right place and then your vinyl is kind of messed up and you gotta peel it up and start over. Line it up exactly where it should be. You're gonna leave a little bit of the transfer paper exposed, okay? Because you're going to stick that down. So let's get this all even. Okay, now we will press it down on the top so that the vinyl or the transfer tape is stuck in one spot. And then we will start to move our parchment paper out of the way. And as we move it out of the way, we can start putting our transfer tape and pressing it down into place. That allows us to have it in just the right spot without making any mistakes, and it doesn't shift while we're working. I had all kinds of tips for y'all today, so that made it work just perfectly. Now, back to putting the rest of them on. The last thing that we're going to do is weed our little um, title on the front of the, our package and then we will put this on. Okay, here is our finished travel game. All of the games fit right inside. One of the things I realized is the dry erase marker that came with this package with the index cards didn't work very well. So I tried it out with just a regular Crayola marker and it worked great. So I've got all the games here. The only issue I have is that because it's magnetic, when it gets inside here, it's a little bit challenging to get it out. So let me get it out just so I can show you guys what I suggest you do, what I had for the parchment paper. Just put the piece of parchment paper in there and then it'll be much easier to get the game out when you're on the last one. And when you're ready to play a game, go ahead and put the rest inside. Take one out, stick it onto the back, and let's see, Applebee's, bird, car. And then you just wipe it off and you're ready to play again. Can close it, place it back inside. Oh, forgot my marker and my eraser. And you're ready to travel with entertainment. OMG, I am obsessed with this game. I think it's so cute. I love that it all fits together really nicely in this package. It's got the dry erase pen, it's got the little wipe so that you can reuse it and I just think it's perfect to take with you wherever you go. I hope you enjoyed making this with me as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you and if you are not following me on my social media channels please make sure that you are following me at The Crafty Brick. I'm The Crafty Brick at all the places, um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I'm always sharing something crafty so I hope that I will see you around in the crafty streets more often and thank you for being here with me today i really enjoyed sharing this project with you um i will be seeing you around until next time stay crafty my friends bye